How did we go from this to this? That is what I would like to find out by playing the game chronologically. To start our journey, we'll have to go all the way back to the release day of RuneScape on the 4th of January, 2001. When we compare the old-school RuneScape character design screen from 2023 with the one from RuneScape of 2001, we can still see a lot of similarities. You can still choose your head and hairstyle, your gender, as well as your skin, top and bottom colors by simply using arrow buttons. There are two major differences though. One, you can choose to permanently become a Pikea, which enables PvP everywhere in Gilanor, except for in Lumbridge, which was a safe zone. And a second difference is that you must select one out of the five classes. And depending on the class chosen, players would receive different starter items and stats. The adventurer gets level 2 in every combat stat and receives a tinderbox, bronze axe, an empty jug and an empty pot. The warrior class starts with level 3 attack, strength and defense as well as 12 hit points. And for the starter items, they get a bronze sword and a wooden shield. The third class is a wizard, and they start with level 7 good magic, as well as a blue wizard hat. As for the necromancer, they start with level 7 evil magic, and a black wizard hat. And lastly, we have the ranger. They start with level 6 ranged and a bow with 10 arrows. The idea of having classes in RuneScape was later scrapped with the release of Tutorial Island, with one of the reasons being that the differences between the classes were too minor. Hi, and welcome to Lumbridge, the starter area where the game drops you off after you've created your account. And even 22 years later in Old School RuneScape, this has remained the same. Except for in RuneScape 3, where they have changed the starting area to Berthop. But where can we go from here? Let's take a quick gander at the world map of RuneScape when it was first released. And as you can see, it is basically just the Kingdom of Miscellanea. One thing that I would like to point out is that on release, the Drainer Manor exists, but Drainer Village has yet to be released. So Drainer Village gets its name from the manor, and I always thought it was the other way around. The more you know. On the release of RuneScape, you had to choose a class, which you cannot do anymore. Comparing to what we start with in Old School RuneScape, the closest class would be the Adventurer, so let's start dropping everything that the Adventurer did not start with. The small fishing nets as well as the shrimps are greyed out because those items have not been released yet. And this also goes with the skills. Fishing is currently greyed out as well as every member's skill because they have not been released yet. And the only thing I can do with items that have not been released yet is if I try to use it, I will get an error message. So I can pick up items that have not been released yet, but I cannot eat shrimps because that's impossible. And also I cannot use shrimps because that's also giving me a error message. I can't do anything except for dropping those not yet released items. And it is all done because of the Chrono plugin. And this plugin should be available in the plugin hub by the time this video is released. Currently, everything is released up until the end of 2004. 2005 and later will be added sometime later. So if I were to change this to like, let's say June, and then I can pick up the shrimps and the small fishing net. Because if I quickly close and reopen the Chrono plugin, then you can see that the fishing skill has been released in this month. So now I can use the use option as well as the eat option. But I am not yet in June 2001, so let's go back to January to make these two useless again. So I need to close the plugin and reopen it to see the standard text again. 
The maker of this plugin, the very talented Idol, did a fantastic job with it. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel. The release of RuneScape came with 15 skills to try out, 6 quests to do, weapons and armor to equip up until adamant, and the highest level NPC is a level 46 Black Knight. So of course, let's start off with all the quests. Looking at the current world map, basically only Lumbridge and Varak have been released. And to help introduce these two areas, we have three quests each. Cook's Assistant, Sheep Shearer and Restless Ghost in the Lumbridge area, as well as Demon Slayer, Romeo and Juliet and Shield of Arif for the Varak area. Cook's Assistant is still the same iconic quest to fetch some milk, flour and eggs. The only noticeable difference is that cows on release were not attackable, meaning that every cow was a dairy cow. The next quest that got released with Lumbridge, Sheep Shearer. Back in RuneScape Classic, you could shear the same sheep over and over again, which made shearing sheep one of the only things that was easier to do in RuneScape Classic than in RuneScape 2. Next, did you also find it quite odd that there was a spinning wheel in a bedroom in the Duke's castle? Well, originally, the spinning wheel was put on the top floor of the southern tower of the castle, and that is where you had to spin your wool before the castle got renovated and got a complete new floor. The final quest here in Lumbridge is Restless Ghost. And the ghost itself is a lot spookier in Classic than comparing to what we have now. Also, Father's Ernie's house was originally on the eastern side of the swamp. So you would think you can get the Ghost Peak Amulet quicker, but no. There was no opening in the fence between the graveyard of Lumbridge and the Lumbridge Swamp. So you had to traverse westwards to Drainer through the woods, then make a U-turn and then traverse through the swamp to reach Father's Ernie's house and get this Ghost Peak Amulet. And then you had to walk all the way back to talk to the ghost again. This was a really smart way to make the player think that the game world is much bigger than it actually is. Let us now head north to the capital city of the Kingdom of Miscellanea. In here we will find a distressed man called Romeo. Ever since the release of the Romeo and Juliet quest, it has basically been unaltered. Except for in the game now they have a cutscene, while Runesley Classic doesn't. But besides from that, it's basically identical. Now I do think I'm a little bit too weak to take on the quest bosses of both Shield of Aerith and Demon Slayer. So before doing those quests, I'm going to be training some combat. And the best way to train attack from base level 1 excluding quest rewards is still the same even after 23 years. And that is attacking dummies here in Varrock. And by doing so, you gain 5 XP each time you hit the dummy. And that's level 8. The highest level that you can get from attacking dummies. Changing your attack style to defense or strength will not work. You will only be able to gain attack XP here if you are below level 8. With that out of the way, let's train some combat on some mobs. But... Which one? Looking at the monsters where you spawn in as a level 4 adventurer, there are teleporting imps of level 5, goblins of level 7, 
and men of level 9. So, level 3 chickens it is. This is going to be my main weapon for now, until I can afford something better. But before my chicken massacre, I will first want to chop down some trees. Because I want to train some cooking at the same time. Fishing does not exist yet, so the only way to train cooking is by killing chickens and cooking their meat. Also, cooking beef does not exist because cows are not attackable back then. A little fun fact. Did you know that woodcutting experience in 2001 is scaled with your level? This is a formula for each cut regular log. So at level 1, that is 26.75 XP, instead of 25 in the main game. At level 8 woodcutting, that would already scale to 39 XP for each log which is already 1.5 XP more than Oak would give at level 15 in the main game. At level 30, that would be 77.5 XP, which is 10 more XP than Willows at level 30 in the main game, but it is 12.5 XP less firemaking experience than Willow Locks in the main game. Firemaking uses the exact same XP formula, meaning that your woodcutting and your firemaking XP would always stay the same. With the release of other trees in 2002, the woodcutting XP will be changed, but the fire making XP formula will remain the same until you can start to light other logs than regular in 2004. So if you think that fire making is useless now in 2024, back in RuneScape Classic between 2001 and 2004, the only logs that you can light were regular logs, and the only purpose that lighting logs would have is so that you can train cooking remotely. Also, the plugin says that burnt and cooked chicken do not exist. And that is true. In RuneScape Classic, chickens drop bones and raw meat. Now you might be wondering why I am chopping logs to make my own fires when there is a cooking pot in Groats's house. In RuneScape Classic, this house was pretty empty, and there was no cooking pot. So, let's get started with that combat training. And that is already enough combat training for now. Next, I would like to buy a weapon upgrade, but therefore I will need to make money. And I will be needing a lot of money if I want to afford best in slot of January 2001. I think that the best way to make money playing solo is by mining ore, smelting them into bars and making the bars into weapons and then selling those weapons to the stores. Before I was able to make some money by mining and smithing, I really needed the HP levels, since in the map of RuneScape 2 since 2004, the Dark Wizards are actually a threat when you want to go from the Varak Southern Exit to the Varak Southeastern Mine. There isn't an Eastern Exit, so you must go via the Southern one, and the Dark Wizards in RuneScape 2 are quite dangerous. In RuneScape Classic, I didn't get hit by the Dark Wizards once. So that is one more thing that was easier to do in RuneScape Classic than it is in RuneScape 2. But that changes really, really fast when you compare RuneScape Classic mining to RuneScape 2 mining. RuneScape Classic mining is a real piece of work. Every time you fail to extract the ore from the rock, you will need to click on your pickaxe again and then click on the rock once again. And hopefully you will extract the ores. If not, you will need to click on the pickaxe and click on the rock again. And do this until you have a full inventory. 
Also, there are no banks in January 2001, so once you have a full inventory of extracted ore, then you'll need to make your way to a furnace. But there is only one furnace in the game, and that is in the next town of Lumbridge. So, you will have to hike to Lumbridge to smelt your ores into bars, and then from Lumbridge you will need to make your way to an anvil, but there's only two anvils in January 2001, and those are both in Varrock. There's one in the center of Varrock, and there's one on the western side of Varrock. I wouldn't say it is south of the bank, because the bank does not exist yet. Let's make our bars into weapons that we can sell, sell them to the weapon store owner south of Varrock, and then make your way back to the mine, and do this over again. In RuneScape 2, this isn't really that bad. In RuneScape Classic, however, with the amount of fails that you do mining, it is quite rough, in my opinion. So in RuneScape Classic, it isn't really that bad, since you can distract yourself by training some good and evil magic by casting spells onto yourself. Anyway, I want to have a mithril sword before I continue with my combat training. So, let's get grinding. And that is level 29 smithing, which is also my final batch of swords, iron swords, that I'm going to be selling to this shop for a grand total of 11,000 GP. Now with this mighty mithril sword, I can continue trading some combat to level 30 attack and defense, so I will be able to equip best in slot weapons and armor. By the way, in 2001, there were no attack or defense requirements for equipping armor or weapons. Meaning that you could be a fresh level 3 account equipping adamant weapons and adamant armor. Well, making money in 2001 was pretty slow, so here's me buying and equipping a mithril sword at level 9 attack. With this new weapon, let's continue the chicken massacre for level 30's attack and defense. You've already seen that, so I'm just gonna skip ahead. After some combat training and acquiring myself another weapon upgrade, I think it's time to continue our first initial goal when we started January 2001, and that was to complete all the six starter quests. There are still two remaining. Let's start with the first one, Shield of Aerith. This quest also has remained unchanged since its release in 2001, which, in my opinion, I find very weird. So on the very first day of the release of RuneScape, you already needed to have a friend to be able to complete this quest. Definitely, when logging into multiple accounts at once was against the rules for the longest time. This rule has been in place since 2001 all the way up to the end of 2014 with the release of Iron Man mode, or around that time. Well, it's a good thing that that rule has been removed, so I can do this quest without any problems. It was a simple quest to introduce the city of Varrock with a reward of 600 GP. And that 600 GP was definitely not something to scuff at. That's like four inventories of sword making. With Shield of Aerith out of the way, there is just one more quest remaining, Demon Slayer. But before I want to take on this quest, I would like to get my best in slot armors. With all that smithing training, I have still plenty of money. So these are currently my best in slot shield and legs. 
Now you can make a steel, mithril and adamant version of this blade legs and kite shield, but the only way to obtain a kite shield and legs would be by smithing. And if we go to adamant, adamant blade legs will take me to 86 smithing. And I think that is just a bit excessive. So before we go, let's quickly talk to Horvik. Let's buy a Mithril Plate Body. There is just one more item, I think. Nope, I just need to pass through this clothing store real quick. Buy myself a cape. That is the best in slot cape. Very first time here in Barbarian Village with the newly unlocked music track. Let's trade this character for an adamant full helm. It is an actually the best in slot helm. There's nothing better in the release of RuneScape. Now there's technically one more best in slot item that we can equip, but that is what I forgot to buy in the Varak clothing store. Be right back. So the clothing store, you still have leather boots available even 23 years later. Now what the clothing store also has uh, are leather gloves, but you can only wear gloves if you are not wearing plate bodies, because in RuneScape Classic, plate bodies include or cover up the glove slot. That is going to be interesting for the new best in slot next year, when gloves become actually pretty decent. So this is going to be my best in slot armor for this release of RuneScape. Now let's also finish the sixth and the final quest that is released on January 4th and the release day of RuneScape by starting and completing the Demon Slayer quest. The final quest that introduces us to the city of Varrock. Now comparing Demon Slayer now in 2024 to Demon Slayer from 2001, these are basically identical. Excluding the talk with the Gypsy, which has a cutscene, which 2001 doesn't have, it is basically identical. You'll still need to fetch three keys to be able to get Silverlight to be able to defeat the demon. The first two can be obtained in the city of Varrock, and the third one can be obtained in the Wizard's Tower by handing in 25 regular bones to a wizard. Once you've obtained Silverlight, defeat the demon and quest completed. The incantation is literally the same, but it's just uh, chosen a little bit differently. Now hopefully I will not die from all these dark wizards. Because I can't eat these cooked chickens until RuneScape 2000. Woof! Good! That were all the quests done. My best in slot done. So next, what I wanted to do is showcase all the skills. Attack on release increases your accuracy. And that's it. You do not need any attack level to equip any weapon. Strength basically increases your damage output. Defense decreases the amount of damage you take, but defense is also not required to equip certain equipment. Next is ranged. I'm gonna be buying that from the archery shop of Louis. And on the release, it is pretty simple. There's only one bow and there's only one type of arrow, which you need to buy one by one. So let's go train some archery. The next skill in the line is Prayer. I've been killing quite a lot of chickens. It seems that I've just passed 2500 and I've been burying basically all of the bones. But Prayer on release didn't have any uses. So if we go to the prayer book because of the plugin, I cannot activate anything because none of these prayers have been released yet. Same goes for magic, but magic is a little bit different. The way to train magic from January to May 2001, before prayer and magic got completely overhauled, was by casting the original good and evil magic spells. Yes, 
Magic had two spellbooks, basically. Good magic and evil magic. Good magic had chill bolt, burst of strength, camouflage and rock skin, which you can cast onto yourself for some bonuses. And at level 14 is wind bolt, which is a strength to missile attack. For evil magic, you have confuse, thick skin, shock bolt, elemental bolt and fear. Next is crafting, and there's only one method to train crafting currently, and that is via making a boss of wool, which I've already done by completing the sheep shearer quest. Then we have the next row, that is mining. There are currently the two Varrock mines, as well as the L Carrot mine. But the thing is, pickaxes do not exist currently. So the only pickaxe that you have is a bronze one. All the other pickaxes will be released somewhere in 2003. Smithing can be done in the only furnace in Lumbridge, as well as the two anvils in Varrock. Cooking, there's only one way to train cooking, and that is by cooking the meat from chickens. Fire making, there's only one log that you can light in RuneScape Classic, and those are regular locks until 2004. Wood cutting in the year 2001. There are only regular trees that you can cut until the release of fletching in 2002. And that are all the skills. Now there's only one more thing remaining. And that is to defeat the strongest monster. Lesser demons in the wizard's tower do not exist. I had the same rules with my Time Traveler series back in 2016 and I have chosen that monster to be my strongest but Lesser Demons do not exist until Musa Point has been released which is around June. So the actual strongest NPC that you can fight is the Soul Black Knight south of Drainer Village that has yet to be released. On RuneScape 2001, the Black Knight would be level 46. So I think here in old school RuneScape, Black Knight of 33 will be a little bit easier to defeat. Hopefully. I have come for revenge with full HP, Black Knight. That is it. There is nothing else to do on the 4th of January 2001, except for some more mining and smithing to try to upgrade my gear. But that is going to take a really, 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 really long time. In the next video, we are going to the next game update so we can continue our journey to completing RuneScape chronologically. Okay, thanks, bye.